No, yeah. They just moved. He just moved to the Philippines a year ago. Yeah. He, he packed all his stuff up, and um, they're actually living on Clark Air Force Base, the old Air Force Base that he was stationed at when he met his wife there yeah, 30 some years ago. Yeah, so. that's where I was at in the 80s. My, my dad did 30 years in the Air Force, and uh, he adopted a kid everywhere he went. So, unfortunately, oh, I was. Wow. Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, unfortunately, I was the last one out of the five of us, and I mean, he was in Germany, uh, Panama, the Philippines. <clears throat> so you know, I got a, a you got a conglomerate of, of a mixed international family. So yeah. and, you know, it was interesting, you know, because I mean, it was good for me to be growing up because I, I was exposed to that culture. But you know, being in the military, it's just it's something that you know, it's a melting pot, and you know, you being in the Navy, you know, you know it for for firsthand and how it was and so it, it's good because it has given me that cultural experience that a lot of people don't get to have uh, growing yeah. up and, and experiencing it and that's a good thing with my wife so right now like my wife is in Austin so she's the uh, she's the director of uh, mathematics here in the school district and I mean you know she was an immigrant from from what is and uh, you know right across the border from us and I mean she came from nothing and you know she worked her way up from getting her bachelor's, master's, and now, you know, she has her PhD, and she's doing very well, wow. you know. Yeah, and I mean, it's stories like that, you know, and, I, and it's stories like that, that that come to me that makes me want, you know, always, always wondering, you know, people that take for granted the American dream kind of reality where, you know, everyone wants to come to the States to get a handout, but if you actually yeah. work hard for what you want to do, and that's that's the thing is, like, I was actually trying to help a lot of people around here just so like my background military wise I'm a network uh, engineer in the army as a warrant officer and so and that's why I have a lot of these electronics I'm just like you know I'm very savvy when it comes to this stuff but yeah. um, for the most part you know I try to help a lot of people because there'll be people on Facebook uh, uh, jobs around here and it's just like you know they 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 want a handout when it comes to trying to find a job but then when I realize I'm like there's <laughs> such a great opportunity with the reselling. I was like, you doesn't. So, there's so much out there too. <laughs> there's just so many things, and and I struggled. Um, I did, you know, this is my third. I'm going to upload this as my third podcast. Technically, I could have really used your help <laughs> because I murdered my first one, and Scott, the the kid that I I interviewed down in Florida, he's kicking butt down there selling. He's he's big into the fishing. He, fishing game so he he'll yeah. buy lure or, or uh reels and and rods and and buy them real low and 30 40 bucks and sell them for like 200 300 dollars yeah. so he's like some big flips down there because that's you know that's that that market that's that business but i i totally i totally hosed my first podcast but if you see on there i kind of i didn't really have a name for what i was trying to do and you just described it. Um, I call it the skills that pay the bills. Yeah. And you got it in spades. You you know, and, and it and I don't really have to even ask you anymore. I know where you're from. Yeah. I mean, look, um, I I was a cook in the Navy. I you said I was in the Navy. I was a cook twenty five years ago. Damn. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was eighteen years old. Yeah. I didn't come from a whole lot. I was a hard worker. And um, and I and the four years I was in was a blast, and I rose through the ranks. But I also I had a lot of friends that came from the same situation I came from. I actually had a couple friends who grew up in the Philippines. Yeah. And because of because of the naval bases, they were you know got that alignment and decided, hey, this is the this is a great way for my you know my future. Yeah. Join the navy and a lot of career um, a lot of career men that I worked with in the navy. You know, they, they came from that same grit yeah. and that same background. And when you come from that and you and you really learn at a young age, um, like you did. I, I I moved all around when I was a kid too. I, yeah. I'm from I'm you know I'm yeah, I'm from, from Ohio. Ohio, but I <laughs> yeah. I've lived all over. Um, we moved down to you know um, Brownsville, Harlingen, the Rio Grande Valley down in. Texas. When I was five years old, we moved there. Oh, wow. So I came from Ohio and I had a huge culture shock, you know, going to Madam Morris on the weekends, you know, seeing that for the first time and, and really getting exposed to a different culture um, made me, you know, the military, I probably should have stayed in because yeah. it was, it was a perfect fit because I, I, you know, I had to, I had to find a way to fit in, 
you know, my whole life. And it was just a, it was a, the military was a natural fit, but you know what? So was the business world. I, I did that for 20, 20 years. Um, I'm also a, a disabled vet. I'm 80% disabled. So yeah. I got that um, little bit of, you know, like you're going to get here in a few more years. Yeah. I got that little check that comes in that helps. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. um, you know, to like you to hear you describe, um, you know, that that hard work, uh, people not wanting to work for something. Uh, I, I mean, you you couldn't you couldn't hit the nail on the head any better. Now, how, you've been in 14 years. Have you been reselling the whole time? No, no, no. So I, you know, so I just started this probably about yeah two months ago. Um, I mean, like like you know, I've had my eBay profile for over you know uh, since 2005, but. And, you know, me and my wife, we got back, we went on our honeymoon in uh, Costa Rica. And that, that's been our plan anyways, that we want to settle down there uh, when I get out. But, um, you know, we got back and we're like, man, I, I've always wanted to do a second part-time job. Like I said, I had a little bit of success when, when it came to my, and I, I, you know, I had a full-blown LLC and everything else for uh, my business uh, that I was running. And it was, it was called Hook Nest. And what it was was just, it was an all-encompassing platform for a real estate agent. Pretty much we did the listings, you know, social media, marketing, but also I was a Microsoft partner too, where I was providing a lot of like, uh, you know, customized Microsoft products for clients, building actual like, you know, programs for them. But it, it, it just, it was, it was hard because my overhead cost as a Microsoft partner over superseded how many clients I had. And I had about 10 clients, but it was just, I wasn't making enough to stay afloat. And then of course me deploying and everything else and going TDY, I, I gave the business a couple people, not giving it, but like letting them run it on, you know, in my absence. And I was paying them, you know, quite a bit of money because I had a, an initial investment uh, uh, from a couple friends. <clears throat> and unfortunately, you know, it backfired and, you know, I, I just had to let the thing go. And that's one of the things why I'm doing this right now is to pay them all, pay them back, but also, you know, just alleviate a lot of debt that we've accumulated in my past. Cause you know, with student loans, with hers, you know, with me, with vehicles and everything else, it's just another means for us to be able to have that additional income. Because like I said, we don't absolutely need it, but at the same time, I enjoy the reselling because it, it's to me I find the joy in it because the things that I find and I feel like okay there has to be a buyer and that's why for me I don't mind educating people because yeah. people will probably be like well aren't, isn't that aren't you going to be building your competition I'm like not a, not necessarily because they they can find something in in their area that will sell to someone around the world. And I, you know, I just had my first international sell. Um, I had a Goodwill box that we bought on, on online on the Goodwill uh, uh, auction site. And it was a Disney box and it was like $30. And we had a ton of Disney products, you know, and I just sold another Disney product. I just shipped it today. It was just a Pinocchio uh, a fairy tale plate. And it was a, you know, it had the, the license and everything sold that for about $24 and I think you know the cost of goods of everything out of that box for the $30 we paid I think everything was maybe less than a dollar it was it was great and I you know I sold this huge like pack of five uh Disney books to a guy in India you know and I mean it was amazing it was great to see because I took advice from uh Rally Roots you know the couple on from Florida yeah. uh to make sure that you do put international shipping on eBay in order for you to open up and expand your market and that's how I look at it is that I want to I want to be a kind of an ambassador as an active duty military you know uh army guy to the military community on my YouTube channel to be able to give them the tools you know, and it's nothing in lure of, you know, and that's one thing my wife asked me was just like, are you worried about getting in trouble, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, no, because I'm not, you know, even as a as an officer, I'm not, I'm not doing anything that can be grounds of fraternization or, you know, anything else like that where my rank will, will obstruct me based on what I'm doing. All I'm doing is providing education and information. It's not like I'm going out with private snuffy, going to thrift stores and, you know, holding them underneath my wing. All I'm doing is providing what I do 
And whether they, they heed to it or not, it's just recommendations and suggestions. And, you know, for me, I love to take, you know, constructive criticism from others, though, to be able to know what I'm doing. And it's kind of funny on Instagram, like I got a couple of friends that are in the military that I was with when I was enlisted and, you know, they do it part time also. And so it, it was good, you know, and I, I've, I've tried to start talking to some other people into it just to do it on the side, you know, for them. So what you're really able to do today um, compared to. For instance, I was in the CVs. I was in the construction battalions. I had deployed. In fact, every time I deployed, I deployed with the Army. Um, yeah. uh, my brother, we, him and my, my older brother and I were both in the same battalion. And in 95, we were in Rota, Spain. I had just came off of a debt. Yeah. And he, he uh, had to go on a debt to uh, Bosnia because that, that whole thing was going on back oh, then. Oh, yeah, that's where my brother was we, at too, yep. Yeah, we sent a we sent a debt to uh, a, about a fifty man debt to um, to Bosnia to build ten cities for the army for yeah. army engineers. Um, his daughter, who's now uh, Samantha, is twenty five, I guess twenty six. Uh, they came to my barracks room and said, "Hey, your daughter, congratulations! Your daughter's you know, was born." And I said, "No, it's actually my brother. He's with the debt in Bosnia." You know, he didn't find out for like four days. So wow. give you an yeah. idea, back then it was just, I talked on my first cell phone from Central America in the mountains <laughs> in 1994. I had, I mean, so it was a whole, I was still like, a, I'm still like an old holdover from before technology was really a yeah. thing, right? Yeah. He couldn't do the things. I had friends that were retiring back then with 20 years that didn't have any real tangible skills yeah. like we talk about the skills that pay the bills brother you got them yeah. because i know what you do i like i said i was in business i was in new construction um i worked my way from the bottom to the top of a company and i, I in fact i built a, a house for a guy uh who worked as a contractor who was cisco certified all that stuff that yeah. you guys do and i don't i don't know a whole lot about but i know it it definitely is the skills that pay the bills yeah and I built him one hell of a house yeah. down in uh, Sanford, North Carolina. Nice. Um, so my point, and I don't, I don't mean to go on a tangent, but my point is I had friends didn't really have real skills getting out. And if the internet would have been the way it is today with the platforms, and then not to mention um, social media, being able to get the message out for free, be able to build your own, you know, to be able to build your own audience and your own group. Yeah. Um, you can do that as an active duty soldier, sailor, airman, whatever, yeah. through a career and actually retire with a business, yep. a check every month in a, in a, a real business. Yep. Um, that I can see because I know the money that's in business. Okay. I, I, I got out of the Navy and I was, you know, I was a listed E4. I forget what I was making back then. Listen yeah. to what I get from the VA now. Um, <laughs> I was, uh, I was, I worked my, you know, I worked my tail off uh, to, to learn the, you know, what I knew in business. I wasn't prepared at all day one when I got off active duty. Yeah. Um, but with, with what you, like, uh, the lead that you can example that you can set for other soldiers uh, i i got a good you know i spent um i just moved back to ohio about six months ago i lived right outside of fayetteville north carolina for the last seven yeah. years um in southern pines and i had a lot of um that's where the in southern pines is a lot of the guys that are going through the q course yeah the SF just feed right course, through there yeah they all, they all, you know, that's a year long or so course. Yeah. They all stay there. So I, I got to be real good friends with the commander of the, of the course. He lived there. And another, another friend of mine that was, you know, um, in the army, those guys, uh, the one, uh, one, one friend of mine, I know he'll be watching this when I, or listening to this when I upload it. Um, I'm trying to tell him, you need to start buying stuff. Just yeah. get, uh, just, just uh, find something that you're really interested in. It might be it might be knives. It might be whatever the case may be. Start listing and start doing it as a hobby. It happens real damn fast and it turns into a business. Oh yeah. Because there's no you know I've 
I've negotiated leases. I've bought out storefronts. I mean, I, I've been I've been through the gamut in business. Yeah. And I know what it costs to really start up a company. And just kind of like the scenario that you've had to deal with this other business and you hired somebody because you had to leave to run it, you know, you can't pay anybody to do your own push-ups. Yeah. It, they are, there's no way that whoever you left that to, no matter how much you were paying for it, cared and had the emotional attachment that you had to it because it would have never failed in your hand. Yeah. All you need in this business is one deal. Yeah. Turn it all around. I stumbled onto pay less shoes last summer going out of business and I bought out two stores. I walked into the first one and I looked at my wife and she said, the lady said, everything's a dollar. And I went, I was like, you know, like a fighter and put back on their heels. I, I went back on my heels and I looked at the store and there was still a lot of shoes in there. And I said, I walked, I just, I just calmly walked up to the cashier and said, um, I'm buying everything in the store. Oh, yeah. Just locked the door. And I, and I walked over and locked the damn door. And as her and my wife were ringing up 350 pairs of shoes, I was telling people at the front door, we're closed. <laughs> I turned $350 into over $7,500 wow. over the last year. Dang. So you're Dang. just, I don't know what you're and we, I, that's not enough. That's none of my business. Yeah. But that's what's good about this business. Yeah. You're one deal from, you're one guy deployed that needs to get rid of something that you can buy and make a deal on. I mean, just how it is. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the business, the buy low, sell high business. But um, you're so you're mostly uh, doing like arbitrage through goodwill. I saw you just bought a bulk box. Yeah, so we 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 do various. So we don't stay uh, static to just you know thrift stores, retail online, retail in stores. We do it all. Uh, that way, it gives us the availability and the portfolio that we need to expand. Um, we don't. Yeah. So like, this is our third box on bulk.com, and I mean our my one of our bulk boxes. It was a un, uninspected. Uh, returns and it was a gamble, but uh, Amazon return. What's that? What is it? An Amazon FBA return? No, no, it was just uh, it was just a various returns. I'm thinking it must have been Target, but uh, we ended up actually doing very well with it though, uh, because it was sporting goods, but it had a ton of baseball cards, and so we've already probably paid for that box just with the quantity of baseball cards that I've already sold. Because uh, everything out of that box, it came out to about, uh, I would say less than $2. And I was selling the baseball cards for about $25. And I think I already, I already unloaded about four to seven of them. So, I mean, Can, How'd you ship them? Uh, poly bags and bubble wrap. So I try to keep... Yeah. Yeah, I, I try to keep them as, as minimal as possible, but at the same time, protecting them. Um, and then I just go through, so the, the biggest thing, you know, and in one of my videos I explained that, you know, with eBay, it, it, there's an error for some reason when it comes to USPS, but taking advice from a lot of the YouTubers that are resellers, I, I do pirate ship. Um, I do have a review on my YouTube channel on, on their services. I mean, I think it, I mean, there's a lot of third party uh, platforms out there, but uh, with pirate ship, it's it really is easy because it gives you one the analytics and then it automatically withdraws. And so we've recently we've just separated our bank account and it was a recommendation from a friend of mine because everything else that we've been doing prior to separating the banks was through PayPal. So if I was like at Ross or Marshalls, I was using my Google Pay with my PayPal binded to check out. So that way I had you know uh, itemized transactions of what I was spending from what I was earning off on resale. So everything that we have earned, uh, we, we do our best to try to, to you know separate our personal income to our reselling income. Uh, but my wife hates to tell me that because she's like, well, whatever we make from the reselling is still our income. And it is, but you know, we do do our best to try to just reinvest until we get to a comfortable state. 
our, our end goal with between bulk, thrifting, online, you know, uh, arbitrage, and retail arbitrage, we want to be around on eBay about 750 items at any given time. And then, uh, and then now I want to start focusing more on posh, Poshmark with clothes because my wife is very well, you know, up to par when it comes to clothing design and brand names, and I'm not, you know. I mean, I've had this sweater since 2001, and, and I, you know, me, you know, I grew up in a surfer town, so I'm not, I'm not into Michael Kors and Calvin Klein and all those other brand name things, but limited. You're into limited clothes. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm into. I honestly, and she was just like, well, you know. Honestly, it's like you can get these thrift clothes, these brand name, really nice th brand name thrift clothes, wear them for a week and then let them sell. But for the most part, like I said, you know, now I'm, I'm kind of getting more into the clothing items. And uh, like I, I picked up a Donald Trump uh, tie and I mean, I got it for a dollar and it's worth, uh, I got it for about three dollars at Salvation Army. Looked on eBay and I mean, it's going for about, as a sold comp for about 25 bucks, you know. So it, it, it's just, there's, there's so much and that's the thing I always tell people is like, you know, someone's trash is another man's treasure. And mm -hmm. so, you know, that Scooby-Doo waffle maker that I sold for $24, I picked it up for $2 and hoped and prayed that, you know, it turned on and it made a, a waffle that was in the shape of Scooby-Doo. And long and behold, it did. And so, you know, that's my, that's what I like about this whole adventure is yeah. whether I make a dollar or 50 cents on a profit, it's just a, it's a thrill of getting excited from finding, you know, something that somebody just disregarded, you know. Let me give you a secret because you're in an army town. Let me give you something I did down in Fayetteville. Um, the, not as much Goodwills, but the Salvation Armies down in Fayetteville are full of old army uniforms. Mm -hmm. Now... Army uniforms, you can go into any Army, Navy store and they're trying to sell stuff, yeah. and the stuff doesn't sell. No one really wants it. I actually did sell, and the reason why I got it had, you know, because that's the home of the Special Forces, yeah. had all the SF stuff on the uniform. I sold it, no kidding. I sold a movie studio, bought it from me. He oh, sent me the messages and everything, and I was like, he thought it was mine, and I said, no, but I have you have sailors in that movie i'll send you mine for free <laughs> so i could just so i could say my you know yeah. dress blues were in a movie um the patches yeah if you can go into if you can go into the um into salvation army or goodwill down there and you can get it like salvation army you can get uniforms for like literally a dollar yeah if you can harvest the patches off of some patches sell yeah and and like there's huge profit on on ebay it's kind of like um your baseball cards it's real yeah simple shipping uh, that's why my wife and i and i say my wife and i you know i'm doing the podcast and all this stuff but you know my wife and i are a hundred percent a team in this business yeah. that's how we're able to you know we we did some pretty outrageous numbers for um for last year but it was it was because we focused 100 percent of our effort into it um for the first time i i fully retired about two years ago yeah. i say retired i exited the workforce, workforce yeah. i no longer am employable yeah it's too easy to make money um i was in real estate you talk, talk about, about real estate i was in you name it man yeah. i i did it to make money this is the best way to make money that i've found okay that it's it's um you know business is literally buy low sell high i mean that's what the stock market is built on i mean that's what you know everyone says based on the economy it's actually what they're really talking about is that you know the stock market yep um we just freeze up uh, we yeah just we're good up. we're good now um there's nothing there's nothing easier than this uh i just bought and you might have saw the video i tried i don't do long videos because i'm just not an editor i don't i need the i i need to spend the time and learn it's it's really up to me it is um, but i'm just i just do short videos and uh i bought i bought an amazon seller out um they must have shipped all of his returns to him he wanted way too much for him um you know, I said it on the video. I paid fifty bucks for it. Uh, I probably, 
I probably should have paid him a little more. To be honest, I felt a little bad. I, I did drive like an hour and a half round trip to get it. So, yeah. I mean, he wanted out of it. The kid was no longer interested in it. Man, I paid I paid 50 bucks for it. I made 80 in the first 24 hours. And it was all Amazon returns. That's why I asked you if it was Amazon returns on your bulk box because I'm interested in buying Amazon returns because I think that, I shouldn't say I think, I know because we had some FBA returns. I no longer sell on FBA, yeah. Amazon FBA, but we had some and they sold like hotcakes on yeah. on eBay. Uh, do you do any Amazon? You said uh, Poshmark. Do you do any Amazon? Yeah, I do Amazon, but I, it's primarily uh, books. Um, I, you know, because it, it, it's just being brand new on Amazon FBA. You're gated for so many categories. So, I mean, I'm, I, I, I have some luck with some toys, but I mean, like just recently, I sold a. I had a fifty cent book, uh, religious book that. I got for yeah fifty cents. It was listed for forty five, and I sold it for thirty five, and I made about twenty four dollar profit. So nice. Yeah. So and that's the thing. I'm paying though. So I'm paying for Scouty. So I'm paying about nine ninety five a month. But I mean, it pays for itself. But it allows me to download the database from Amazon, go in the store with you know the scanner, and just scan away. I got about a handful of books uh, that I got this past weekend that I got in my new video. Uh, just showing what I was able to pick up, but um, but for the most part, I you know I, I try to listen to and I watch uh, Reezy a lot of times when it comes to his books because mm -hmm. there there is a book market and that's the thing that I've actually sold books on Amazon or on eBay too. Um, <clears throat> I picked up a pair of Ford uh, 1970 you know truck manuals that I got for I think two dollars at Savers and I mm -hmm. sold them for about twenty one dollars on uh, on on eBay. And then I had a Harvard collection. Um, what type of? Uh, and it was all it was was volume one. The whole volume would so, would have sold if I would have able to secure it for about three hundred. But I sold that one for I think maybe got it for about fifty cents, and I sold it for about twenty dollars. So, and, and and so there's some books out there that I'll find that I know just looking at it, it's a novelty item to somebody, and then I'll pick it up and just put it on on eBay and let it sit. <clears throat> but uh, otherwise. You know, pretty much all my other books that I only get will what I know will get you know profit on eBay. So right now, I think I was, uh, I'm sorry on Amazon. So I have about I think 22 items uh, on Amazon FBA, and I mean the the storage fees for the books are very low, so it, it really doesn't affect. And, and yeah. yeah, I've gotten to the point when I go shop, I um, I just look for cool stuff. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. And it sounds as crazy as it sounds because we have 2,200 items right now in inventory. And, and we and we move stuff. But we don't try to get rich on anything. I mean, there's some stuff we make money on, but these hits win World Series. You know, yeah. we, we're trying to just – we're trying to move product. But um, I'll go in and we'll look we'll look at a bunch of cool stuff, and I'll, I'll fill my cart up with, with as much cool stuff as I can find. But, you know, in the famous words of uh, – Ronald Reagan, trust, verify. <laughs> yeah. So I oh I then go through and I and I I look them up and um, you got to have discipline in this business to be able to put stuff back. Yeah. After you verify. Yeah. And out of about ten things in the cart, my wife and I, no kidding, kept two items. Yeah. And we were there. We were there for about forty-five minutes, and put those items together will make about a hundred bucks on. To me. A half hour of my time there, a half hour here shooting photos and doing a listing, hundred bucks an hour, I'll take it. Yeah, easy, easy. money. It, it, it is, and that's that's my that's thing. What is people that, have to hear. Yeah, and that's my thing though too. Is like I've I've always caught myself where I put stuff back, and I mean it has to. You have to be honest with yourself and be realistic, knowing that. Yeah. Okay, either A, yes, it will sell in time, which I'm fine with. I'll, I'll get items I know will sell, but it will sell in time. But otherwise, you know, and then certainly like right now, it's a perfect time to be listing because if you look at the eBay, um, the eBay seller hub and you look at the trends of certain products, of course, there's a big spike in March through April because that's when everyone gets their tax return. So they have, you know, disposable income at that point to be able to buy frivolous things so my wife she went to germany last november 
Uh, no, at last October, and we we bought about I think ninety euros worth of stuff like beer steins and all sorts of trinkets, you know. And she went to this flea market, and these were these were like really really nice, you know, uh, collectible items. And you know, they're sitting on our eBay right now. But eventually, I start I'm starting to get pop ups of one to two watchers on every item. So, you know, I got like this Star Wars collector set a bowl and a cup i mean a, a coffee mug and a bowl and it's it, you know it's in german so somebody's gonna get it and, and it's just like i said it's just a matter of being patient and that's one thing that, with my wife is that she always has to keep me you know grounded and tell me be patient things will sell and which they do and it's just a matter of time once once that person clicks on it and finds it you know so but uh, but overall, you know, like I said, that, that's my thing. You know, I, I I got a lot of inspiration from this from Gary B. You know, watching his videos and him listening. We, like every time we go on a road trip, we listen to his motivational speeches. And I mean, that guy came from nothing, you know. And I mean, he came from as a Russian immigrant, building himself up, using social media, you know, to build himself up from the wine business. And then you know, here he is doing garage flipping. You know and fighting for a dollar and he's a multi-millionaire you know and so actually he's coming here tomorrow to speak in el paso he's doing a uh, a tour I yeah I, unfortunately i wasn't able to go because my wife is out of town and we wanted to go oh together. no yeah so you know but like i said you know he he's a big inspiration to to us as far as you know staying grounded and, and moving forward because like i said you know for both of us we we don't need the income we we are pretty well off but at the same time I, like i said money is money and it, whether we make you know we turn that a dollar into two dollars that's 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 happy i money. had i saw someone I, I commented on someone's post yesterday on, in, on instagram forgive me i'm not sure I'm not I'm, i don't quite remember who it was but um, I, I, they said that they said this, a similar thing, um, that, you know, that you just said you, the, there's, you fight over that last dollar. Yeah. You said, I find myself fighting over this last dollar. Um, and I say fight for it because that's what puts gas in your car. I, from a young age, I, I grew up, my, my family was in the concession business, so I traveled the carnivals and fairs. Mm -hmm. We were carnies. Mm -hmm. And I grew up breaking stands down, setting them up, stocking, working. I worked my butt off um, from the time I was about 12 years old. And my uncle, if there were still people on the midway at 1130, and he was an old sailor from uh, Korea, he said, we're paying for gas and we're paying for gas to get the clear field. We're paying for gas to get the butler. <laughs> you always, you, you can never, you can never, um, because that, that's your, it's college tuition. That's your, there's so many, what you know, and when you find out what your why is, like Emily, um, my second podcast, her why, they live in Syracuse, New York, and her husband's a truck driver and she takes care of the kids and she babysits. Her why to make that money so she can put her kids through private school yeah. it doesn't get any better than that yeah it doesn't get any better than your kids you know investing in your kids lives to make their lives better so these kinds of you know this this type of business and really um and and it can be the catapult to maybe maybe uh reselling isn't what you want to do you want to open a coffee shop and you know you're going to need ten thousand yeah. dollars to put down on the loan yep. this is a great way to raise that capital uh in or a soldier getting you know getting ready to you know get out and go to college or or just move on and 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 go on and 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 be a civilian and work the rest of their life having these kind of skills that if you have to break, if there is a break glass in case of emergency yeah this, this can be it yeah um uh, what do you do? You, you you have a how many listings totally do you have? Uh, so right now on eBay I have over two hundred and eighty. Um, I've had. How do you organize it all? Uh, so on the eBay store, as far as like as far as like physical or logical on the website. Yeah, your inventory. Where do you store it all? Keep it's it organized. That kind of stuff. Yeah. In the garage. Yeah, it's all in the garage, and then I. So I've used the club I'm trying to really hone in the system, but 
Like right now we have it labeled by, you know, 101, 102, 103, and then on an Excel sheet, I have it broken down by tabs, but you know, I, I'm getting to the point right now where it's just, it's hard to, it's, it's really hard to intake. Cause like I said, we're getting about 50 to 60 items every weekend and trying to in process. But a lot of the times, like right now with all the clothes we have, I poly bag them after we take pictures, we steam them, poly bag them, and then have them ready to ship to go. Cause like a, a weekend ago, we sold <clears throat> uh, about four to five items. And I mean, the, the, the total cost of goods was about $3. And I mean, we made $64 in a weekend that Sunday, but this was Ralph Lauren, Vineyard Vines, uh, Michael Kors items, and they just went quick. But um, for the most part, like I said, I, the garage is, it, it, it's, it's getting there. Um, I'm, I'm trying to convince my wife to get me to let me get a storage unit so that way we can get our junk that's out there and a lot of my military gear that's I can't get rid of that I have to turn in when I retire that can just sit in a small little 5 by 10 storage unit or probably something smaller than that that you know we can just put in there and then that way we can dedicate our garage just to you know so right now I just set up our studio in there I got a light box in there um, and then I also have the secondary computer in there that's mapped to the printer in here so that way I can do all my measurements have and I built a I don't know if you've seen in my video I built my own little uh, work desk you know uh, work yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so you know I, I have it fairly well set up in there and that that was our goal you know that we wanted to turn that garage into a, uh, our work area where we can keep everything separated such as this room here this is where I do pretty much all my recording and research and everything else but uh, we do all the postings and everything else in the garage so but uh, as, as far as you know trying to This is where I'll probably leave. This is where I got better. I have to learn to be a better host when it comes to yeah. a podcasting because podcaster, you know, you're listening to this. What we're doing, Tim's pulling up his eBay account, and I'm actually we're trying to look for a, a, a custom. It's called custom label. Okay, so what? Go over to your filter, and customize. I'm um, down to your bottom right. Oh, right here. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. There you go. I'm pointing to this once again. I'm still pointing on the screen. And what you want to look for is custom label. Yep. See it right here. And click on that and then kind of, and then you can reorder it too, I think. Yep. Save. Yep. There okay, it is. Okay. So in that, in that, you, you don't have to do a spreadsheet ever again. In that, you put your, if it's location 100 or 101, you uh, put it in there. It'll show up on your application, on your app, on your phone. The customer never sees it. So you can put your inventory location there and then you're uh, solid, man. And if I, <laughs> yeah, if I yeah, done man. that a long time ago, yeah, that's going to save you a lot of time from doing, I saw your, I saw your spreadsheets and I was like, this guy is so bad dang smart. <laughs> um, he's probably getting in his own way because look, I'm not that, I don't want to say I'm anywhere near that, but I definitely get in my own way sometimes. Yeah, um, well, but that's, I, I tried that's to, a, I built a macro actually for my scanner and it, that's what I was actually trying to do was an in and out product. So that way I could see a timestamp, but it, it just, like I said, it just got overwhelming to a point where I had to create the barcode uh, when I was able, so everything was automated in my Excel sheet where it would automatically populate a new when I when I would scan the barcode and then I could label it accordingly and then print out that barcode, put it on the product, put it away. And then when I scanned it again, it would timestamp it when it left. So that way I know, but it, it just, like I said, it's, it, it is hard because 
you know, between um, between probably after Christmas and two weeks into January, I was I was selling probably three time three products every day. We were going out the out the door. So, like I said, it, mm-hmm. you know, and I think <clears throat> it, it, it everything's a learning curve for me just as far as the operation side of the house. And, and, and a lot of times, you know, you know, between spending money on poly bags. Um, yeah. Well, and, and it, hey, on another thing, let me share this with you because this is going to help viewers too. Emily taught me this. Um, in oh god, and I'm not going to be able to direct you to it, so you just have to look it up and trust me. And if not, I'll do a video on it and try to show people. But um, y- you can. Um, what was it? What were we talking about again? Uh, I got too many things. The custom labels, or, or the not even- the cust, not the custom labels. Um, I lost my train of thought. I get too many. I get too many things. I get too many things going on. Um, I'll 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 come up with it before yeah. we're done talking. Um, have you seen uh, my my YouTube channel is super boring, but I have about an hour and twenty minute uh, webinar I did. I ramble on, super boring. I hope people leave comments. Um, watch it and leave comments and tell me they fell asleep a hundred times. But in there, I kind of go. Th- I I did a PowerPoint presentation about fifty slides, and it's it's pictures of my inventory system. Um, what we use for an inventory system, we do something similar to you, where we yeah. bag and you know we fold and bag our clothes, and and we have a. I mean, we sell on a any given day. We're selling between ten and twenty five items. So it takes discipline when it comes to um, you know that f- oh, that front office stuff. You know, taking pictures and listing and and staying staying organized. Yeah. Um, so check if if you have an hour and twenty minutes to kill, like, oh, you know, it, it's gonna bore it's gonna bore the heck out of you. But I put some pretty cool stuff in there, and I talk about how we how we buy it. But we're not talking about me. I'm talking about you. Yeah. Um, you're. I know what I wanted to ask you. I like like my like my guy Scott that I talked to for the uh, my first podcast. He's into that fishing, the fishing game. Like I told you, is there something that you have? Like I mean, it sounds like you know a little bit about ball cards. But is there something that you bring to the table that you know um, you feel like you, you know you got a pre- you know, expert eye in that if you see it, you know you can make money on it, kind of thing. I think electronics mainly. Um, you know. I've had really good uh, success when it just comes, and actually it was fun and funny because I, I ended up picking up another VHS player. I haven't I haven't even listed it yet, but I know that it will sell about forty five fifty dollars. And that's a funny thing was was that my wife was like, "Why do people buy these?" And I was like, "It's it's it's nostalgia. It's a history of some people have VHS tapes." And actually, there was a there was a, a, a viral photo going around of an eighty year old man that thanked an eBayer for selling him the VHS tape because he was able to replay his wedding day, you know, video of his wife that just passed away. So, you know, you don't know exactly who you're affecting by selling that VHS player to. And it was, it was just, it was comforting to know that that guy was able to, to relay that message to the eBay seller. But, um, I, I would say probably electronics most of the, most of the time I, I, I hone in on video games. I'm not a big, big video game person, but I, I know what I'm looking for when I walk into a store. But, <clears throat> but on my eBay store, you know, I, I have a conglomerate of different items. And I don't, you know, I, one thing I do suggest to people is don't stay stagnant on one genre of sports cards. And that's why I wanted to name my, my store the Soldier's Box. Originally it was We Sell, You Save. Um, but... There was a person that was on Amazon that had the same name that had horrible reviews. So I was like, okay, I want to be able to put something in retrospect of what my background is and, you know, how I can tie my military, you know, uh, background into my eBay store. And it actually worked out pretty well because there was a gentleman that bought four soccer balls for me. And I I ended up taking a pretty hefty cost uh, cut from it. Um, But... You know, he was bringing these balls down to Guatemala for a missionary trip for a Christian uh, missionary. And uh, so I ended up meeting him halfway And because I, I originally I was listing them, I think, two soccer balls for about 50 bucks. 
and I said, you know, let's do all four for 75 and that included shipping and sent him his way and he thanked me, you know, in the comments and everything else. But that was the one thing he did recognize that I was military. And so it, it is a good thing that to, to have that exposure, you know, not not saying, hey, I'm military, you should buy for me, not nothing like that. But at the same time, knowing, hey, you know, I do this on the side because I enjoy it, not because I need to do it, not because, you know, I'm about to go bankrupt or something. So... Oh, yeah, man, this stuff's in my blood. I you, you talk about international shipping. The two coolest things I bought and sold last year. One was this pub set. It was like a trap. I was walking by the bins, the Goodwill bins, and I I buy clothes there. We're definitely in the clothing game. Um, but a general merchandise, I it all makes money. So whatever. I was walking by, and it looked like a suitcase. Yeah. And I always check pockets, and I check, you know, because I find money at the Goodwill all the time. Oh wow. So uh, I opened this thing up, and it's a traveling pub set. Wow. The directions were still in it from the 1960s. Um, it was really, like, it was it was really freaking cool, man. I shipped it to the Netherlands for 100 bucks, made 100 bucks on it. The other one was the band, the rock band Kiss. They yeah. had a... Uh, they had little figurines and a scaffolding and I kind of had fun putting it all together and I did a video of it and, and, and whatever. I shipped that overseas. So the two coolest things I sold and that, that sold for some cash. Yeah. Uh, the two coolest things I sold, I shipped overseas. You, thank God you started talking because I remember what I was going to tell you and I had to write it down. Um, <laughs> Emily, Emily Conway, um, who was in my last podcast, um, she did a video a lot of those shipping materials that you're buying, the poly bags, once a quarter, if you have a store, if you're an eBay store owner and you pay the bill every month and all yeah. that stuff, once a quarter they give you, I forget, it's based off of the program you're in. I think we're in a pro seller or something like that. I forget what ours cost. You got to have, you got to be a mathematician to figure yeah. out that invoice. Um, <laughs> they give you every quarter um, about $50. Um, towards shipping, oh, wow. uh, free shi free shipping. So we actually, we didn't need any because we had a bunch of poly bags already, um, but we actually bought some of the eBay stickers, the thank you stickers. And yeah. um, oh, I, I made, my, here, my shameless plug of the podcast, I make candles. I have my own special domain, verygoodcandlecompany.com. <laughs> um, oh, man, they smell great. They're all natural soy candles. Um, we uh we we sell these. I bought boxes to fit these in for free. I got a hundred boxes. Oh, wow. They're perfect. That they'll, they'll be able to you know ship them in and whatnot. But so that's there. If you didn't know that, you get each quarter yeah. you can um, go in and yeah. and uh, so if you haven't get on there and go uh get your poly poly mailers there. <laughs> um so. You're, sell, you're, you're, you're reselling. You don't know really where it's going to take you. Um, but in, in the, what, the six years, you can retire in 20? Uh, so I get looked at for my next rank, CW3, um, at 18 years. So if I make it in my primary zone, that will give me, a, I'll have to do two-year requirements. So that will put me push me out at 21. Uh, so, you know, most likely I'll make, I mean, it's a hundred percent, it's about a 90 to hundred percent promotion rate for my, my job. Um, so, you know, and I mean, that's going to be a nice little hefty, hefty change. And then, you know, with my VA disability, I'm looking at over 80% right now. Uh, uh, got asthma, got allergy, severe allergies. I almost died in an airborne incident when, uh, my medic, he threw a static line in front of me caught me luckily uh yeah in this one story uh it was my first night jump it was my 17th jump in alaska and uh you know it was my last jump with the older parachutes the t10 parachutes and i you know i thought it was just an opening shock and you know i get to the ground and the next chalk a guy's rucksack fell out like at a thousand feet everything fell out and we lost an asip radio singard radio just hit the ground and got swallowed up and you know so and in, in about so we did a you know follow-on mission after we went looking for all this stuff um and then by daylight so this was like you know about 
five, five, six o'clock in the morning in Alaska, my battalion XO looks at me and he's like, so I surrender, what's wrong with your neck? And I, you know, I, adrenaline was still rushing in, but here I was bleeding from my neck and I caught the static line of the tail end because it was just flapping in the in the air but like i said i thought you know and this was a c-17 jump so there wasn't really a there's not a huge prop blast compared to like a c-130 so i <laughs> i uh yeah i, I suffered a, a big one there i got rushed to the er um they didn't do an investigation because they wanted to claim that it was just my failure to keep my chin down but in reality it was the static line because they wanted to claim that it was a riser burns that came up but uh ironically there was actual there were guys that were from bragg there were the uh, jump master guys the civilian guys that were there teaching the class they saw me at burger king that, that like that week that morning and they were like hey when when, when did you get that static line injury? And I'm like, and I didn't even say, all I said was thank you. And they're like, why are you thanking us? Because they deemed that it wasn't a static line injury. They didn't do a 15-6. They just said, oh, this is your fault kind of situation. And to this day, he's a sergeant major now. Uh, he was a primary jump master. He was a first sergeant at that point. He apologized numerous of times. And this was like, after I left Alaska, I was at NTC in Fort Irwin. And he saw me, he was an OC there. <clears throat> he saw me and, and you know, like and like I said, this was when I was still enlisted. He was like, sorry, Corinna, I'm sorry. And I'm like, first arm, I was like, no investigation, nothing would have ever caused, you know, me to prevent what happened. It was just it was a freak accident, mistakes were made, whatever the case may be, I'm still alive, and that was it. And uh ironically, you know, my battalion commander, he offered to um he offered me to jump, drop my jump status, and I said no. You know, I was like, you know, I was like, sir, this is this is inevitably this is what we do, and it's inherently dangerous. But the problem was the next jump I did was with the new parachute, which had a few fatalities. So one at Bragg actually, and then on top yeah. of that, on top of that, it was with the Thai jump master. So you know, I was freaking out. But from that jump on, they made me. Uh, either the first to the fifth jumper so I was never in the middle ever again but yeah it was just uh, like I said it was a lesson learned but yeah I, I'll be like I'm, I'm gonna probably try to fight for 100% uh, disability because I have a I had a post thyroid disease and all sorts of stuff and I got I don't know if you see my skin condition I got a vitiligo same thing Michael Jackson had where my body is killing off my skin pigment uh, you know, Joe Rogan just did a video about a minute long video and he has the same thing and he said i would never do it though man i i in fact i don't even eat meat anymore yeah but, uh, that dude does only eat meat and he said it, it he has it's an autoimmune disease and it yep. affects you know he said it actually spots started clearing up who who knows yeah um yeah. there was a there was a lady. gotta fight for it man yeah yeah i i, oh, I will I yeah, you will. gotta you gotta fight yeah. Oh, yeah, I will. I, I'm, I'm I, ready to get an attorney if need be. I just got back from, I actually had another hearing at the in the federal building in Cle up in Cleveland um, Monday, oh, wow. last Monday, Dang. with a judge from D.C. I got out. I lost a kidney on active duty. And, I, you know, of course, you know, just like you just described, and what's good about this is there's going to be a lot of, hopefully we get a lot of, you know, young soldiers, airmen, you know, sailors watching this. Because when you're on active duty, make sure you document everything. Oh, yeah. If you don't, yeah. you are screwed. I ended up, I thought I was fine. I got out. I was 22 years old. I was ready to kick the world's ass. And I, w I was, man. I was kicking the world's ass. We were we were kicking ass and taking names, my wife and I, for, for years in the home building business and, and in the real estate game. And I made a lot of money doing it. And then I was 34. And one day I started feeling real bad. Yeah. And the next thing you know, I was in ICU dying on dialysis yeah. and I had to have a kidney transplant. And I had a kidney transplant 10 years ago and the VA and I got out. I got off active duty, man, with one kidney. Okay. I never filed nothing. I just, I was dumb, you know, young and dumb. Um, don't be like me. I yeah. did end up getting 80%. And now they're actually, because, you know, hearing your story, you get 
beat up on active duty. Yeah. I was in a, I was in a, uh, I deployed back when nobody deployed. We, the CBs have always deployed. Yeah. Um, we were doing humanitarian, you know, we were doing humanitarian stuff before there was ever all these wars that we fought for the last 20 years. So we deployed all the time. Um, but you go through your body, it takes a toll. Does, even at a yeah. young age and you don't realize it, but that catches up to you down the road. Yeah. And, uh, Hey man, yeah. I don't know what they're looking at. If they're going to give me a hundred percent, but I had to get an attorney yeah. and, uh, and she's made a lot of money because of me. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. They, 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 they pay back pay on that stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but that's for a lot of soldiers listening to this sailors, you know, make sure you document everything before you get out. Um, because it doesn't fall back on the military at that point. It falls back on you, mm, yeah. and then you got to deal with the VA, which is a separate organization altogether from what you're in now. So that is that. I'm off my soapbox on the VA. I love the VA. Hey, know. I love the VA. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Take good care of me. Oh, yeah. Just sent me new insoles for my feet. <laughs> All right, man. I, man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. Um, I think you're a good influence um, on just really anybody who who doesn't, you know, th that want to get out there and make a little bit extra money um, or they want their own business. You have all the excuses in the world. Yeah. Um, a lot of people watching this don't understand what a chief warrant officer is yeah. and the responsibilities that go along with that position. And you know, like I said, those are the skills that pay the bills. Yeah. Um, but you're learning a whole new skill set, and that's that's commerce and business. And this is where you can really thrive in life. Mm -hmm. You can really make a lot of money if you if you apply yourself. And you're an inspiration, man. And I can't I can't tell you how happy I am that you you took the time to sit down with an old Navy cook that <laughs> likes to buy and sell things, and uh, and and share with us all. So. Hey, anything, give us some good uh, words of wisdom and we'll, we'll get off of here. Oh, no, no. Yeah, like I said, you know, turning a, a buck into $2 is, is a step forward. And the biggest thing that I always tell people is if you need a starting point, start it at your house. Look around what you have that you don't use anymore. I got, I dump, you know, I unloaded a lot of stuff in my garage and made a hefty profit, you know, because it was, a, it was, a, it was, a, it was, a, it was, positive profit because I mean yeah I, I granted I bought this stuff a long time ago but I mean I've already made you know my money back you know through and through so you know I, I ended up selling all my snowboard gear like a lot of my video game consoles you know right at the Christmas point and I mean it was it was perfect so to, to get into the the business is not hard at all you don't need capital you just need to have some sense of and that's the thing is that, you know, sometimes people tend to be hoarders on, on items that they don't know what to do with it. And that's even, you know, the suggestion that I always make to my military friends is that, and military people in general, you have all this gear that you're not going to turn in to CIF when you out process and what are you going to do with it? There's a buyer out there, you know what I mean? And so even like my basic cold weather poly pros, my, my, my silks and my, my heavies, they sell like hotcakes, you know, online because there's hunters out there. There's various buyers out there that could use your military gear that you just don't, you don't realize. And that's why, and actually one of my videos I'm going to be posting is telling military members, don't post your stuff on Facebook Marketplace in an area where you have a bunch of military members. It doesn't make any sense. You're not broadening and you're not providing yourself. eBay. To eBay. eBay. Yeah. So, yeah, don't don't even mess <laughs> don't even on, on military gear eBay sell it what eBay suggests you sell it yep. for if it's not as much as what you think it should be write a better ad because you're because it's all based on your ad if you write the best damn ad in the world and eBay still sells it tells you to sell it for something you're not happy with sell it for what they tell you to yep. it'll sell Is this trend you know yeah. you, you don't be your worst um, a reseller can be their worst nightmare, their own worst nightmare. They can get in front of their, they can get in their own way. Yeah. So you sell it for what eBay, look, man, I, I carried around a sea bag full of dungarees. <laughs> when I got out of Navy boot camp, I went to A school. 
I, I wore those dungarees in boot camp and in aid school. We're talking about five months of my life. And I got to a battalion. They issued me BDUs. This yeah. was back in the day. The old heavy-ass camouflage. Yeah. Um, the Seabees were still wearing greens back in the early 90s. Oh, wow. Over in the desert in the first Iraq, uh, the what a Gulf Persian War, Gulf yeah. deal. They were, Gulf War. They were the only <coughs> ones over there. And I, I hope the CB comments on this. Yeah. Because they were the only ones over there in greens. We just got camouflage BDUs in like 93. Yeah. Um, I, those... That sea bag full of uh, Navy dungarees, dungarees and shirts sat in a sea bag for 25 years. I just sold the last dungaree shirt, and I made $500 off of that. Yeah, yeah that's on you. That's why I say just I had some jump boots that I had for I had three pairs that I sold, you know, for 40 bucks easily. So these were just we made our first thousand dollars in May and. February of last year. I've had an account just like you for years. I never really yeah, was too focused on, you know, business. Yeah. And and in the first month of our own stuff, we made a thousand bucks. And we didn't and we lived in a little apartment. Yeah. And I was able to make that. Someone like you in a house, I know you've gathered stuff over the years. You can make money on your stuff. So that's great advice to really to anybody out there oh, yeah. um, who first off needs to clean their house up uh second off just needs to make extra money um the, we couldn't be luckier to be humans um at a, at a at a time in history this is this is the best to me this is the best time to be alive oh, yeah. i don't know what comes after this yeah. but this is if my i can i can name so many people in my life that are, have come and gone that could have and so much with the tools that we have today. Oh, yeah. Um, they, did a, they did a lot with what they had, but if they would have had the tools today, that's why I'm, that's why I'm doing this. Yeah. That's why I'm, I'm trying to focus on 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 this content. Gary Vee yeah. is the one who says it, content. You got to get that content out there. Oh, yeah. So, man, I appreciate, once again, I appreciate you. Oh, yeah. Um, I hopefully, I hope you, I hope people, let's, What's your? Do you have a store name? Do you have your eBay store name? Yeah, it's the the Soldier's Box. The Soldier's Box. Yeah, uh, yeah, fantastic. And, and name. I I keep my I so I have actually two Instagrams, um, one for the Soldier's Box and then the Soldier Up and Resell because I don't want to let my buyers know, hey, I'm getting this stuff for next to nothing. But I'm in that right now. My Soldier uh, Soldier Up and Resell. I'm uh, I get out of jail on Wednesday because I was using an app to unfollow and followers. So I'll be a little more that. active once again. That's how I kind of push my YouTube content to let people know, it's, hey, there's a new video through out. Through Instagram? Yeah, through Instagram. And, and I that's the soldier's out. box. Yes. Okay, cool. But, uh, All yeah, right, man. man. So follow, follow my man, Tim, here on the soldier's box on YouTube um, and on Instagram. Follow his, you know, like and subscribe to his to his uh, YouTube page. Follow him on on Instagram. That's how we that's how we found each other. Exactly. Um, yeah. Look, man, keep keep grinding. Uh, I know you probably hear it from all kinds of people, but I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you more than what most people even realize. Um, thanks for thanks for giving me the time, man. Okay, all right, I, I won't keep you no more. All right. Peace, brother. All right, later.